Welcome to the lesson on the product property of radicals. Properties of radicals. Let's go over some vocabulary. A radical expression is an expression that contains a radical. Simplest form of a radical expression is when the three conditions below are met. So to be in simplest form, no radicands can have perfect nth powers as factors other than one. We'll review this. No radicands can contain fractions, and no radicals can appear in the denominator of a fraction. So today we're going to cover just the product property of radicals. Future lessons will cover more. So discovery number one, I'd like you to consider the following radical expressions. Are they true? What can you determine? Go ahead and hit pause. Think about it and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So in part A, it asks, is the square root of 25 added to the square root of 81, is that equivalent to the square root of a radicand of 25 and 81? Here we have the square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 81 is 9. So the sum is 14. This is not equivalent to the square root of 25 at 81. So 25 and 81 is 106, and when you find the square root of that, it's approximately 10.3. These are not equivalent. Therefore, we know that adding two radicals together is quote unquote an illegal algebra move. You cannot do that. Let's look at part B. So part B asks you if the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of 25, is that equivalent to the square root of 16 times 25? So we evaluate these radicals. The square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 25 is 5. The product of 4 and 5 is 20. Here, if we multiply our radicand, we get 400, and the square root of 400 is 20. So we know that these expressions are equivalent. So what you've discovered is that you can multiply radicands and find the square root and its equivalent, but you cannot add radicands. You must simplify first. So in conclusion, we know that the square root of A add the square root of B does not equal the square root of A plus B. However, we have concluded that the square root of A multiplied by the square root of B is equivalent to the square root of A times B. And we will use this in future slides. So the product property of square roots, the square root of a product is equal to the product of the square roots of the factors, meaning you could multiply underneath the radicands or you can individually find the square roots of each and then multiply the square roots. This only works if the values of a and b are greater than or equal to zero. Remember, you'll get an imaginary number if you try to find the square root of a negative value. An example of this would be the square root of 49 times the square root of 4 is equivalent to the square root of 49 times 4. 7 times 2, over here, you multiply the radicand, you get 196. 7 times 2 is 14, and the square root of 196 is 14. So we're going to apply this product property to finding, simplifying these square roots. So the square root of 245 is not in simplest form because the square root, the value 245, has perfect squares as part of its factors. So the prime factorization of 245 is 5 times 7 times 7. So hopefully you can see right here I have two of the same factor. If I multiply 7 times 7, I get 49. That is a perfect square. So we have to simplify the perfect square. The square root of 5 is not a perfect square, and we're going to leave it in radical form. So the square root of 5 remains, and we simplify the square root of 49. Therefore, in simplest form, equivalent to the square root of 245 is 7 times the square root of 5. So these are equivalent expressions, but 7 times the square root of 5 is in simplest form. This is not in simplest form.
because it contains factors that are a perfect square. All right, let's try this algebraic expression. So this radicand is 4x cubed. We're going to separate this out using the product property of square roots. So we have the square root of 4 times the square root of x cubed. So I put the factors, the coefficient, and the algebraic term in the other square root. Square root of 4 is 2. Multiply. x cubed is x times x times x. Right here I have two of the same factors. That's x squared. The square root of x squared is x. So this can come out, giving me 2x times the square root of x. So I need 1x to remain in the radicand. So this 2x times the square root of x is equivalent to this expression, just now it's in simplest form. Your turn. Go ahead and pause. Try to simplify these four expressions. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So the square root of 18 is equivalent to the square root of 2 times the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is a perfect square, giving me 3 times the square root of 2. Equivalent to the square root of 18, however, now it's in simplest form. Negative square root of 40 is equivalent to negative square root of 4 times 10. So if you could break this down in different ways, you could say 2 times 20, but neither of those is perfect squares. So I picked 4 times 10 because 4 is a perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2, so I have negative 2 square root of 10. Square root of 10 needs to stay because it's 2 times 5 and those are prime numbers and not perfect squares. So negative 2 square root of 10 is in simplest form and equivalent to the expression negative square root of 40. Square root of 36 y cubed. So I break that down into the square root of 36 times the square root of y cubed. The square root of 36 is 6. And then y cubed is y times y squared. And we know that the square root of y squared is y. So that comes out and we're left with 6y square root of y, which is in simplest form. Square root of 50 times b to the fifth. So separate it out, square root of 50, square root of b to the fifth. So 50 is 2 times 25. 25 is our perfect square. Over here, b to the fifth could be written as b squared times b squared times b. So remember we have an exponent of 1. 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5. So over here, square root of 25 is 5. The 2 remains underneath the radicand. Square root of b squared is b. Square root of the second b squared is b. And there we have another b left in the radicand. So we have a 2 and a b left inside the radical giving us a simplified answer of 5b squared, square root of 2b. Thank you for joining me today.